This episode was brought to you by Slate Black Industries. For M-Lock grips and accessories, visit slateblackindustries.com. Now the sheer silhouette of a D-cell light mounted on top of an MP5 invokes that image of the SAS troopers that were storming the Iranian embassy. And as it very well should, since this was a major shift in weapon-mounted lights playing a huge role in our CQB doctrine. Now from all accounts, these black-clad troopers had stormed the embassy that day with very improvised lights on their submachine guns. Duct tape, Jubilee clips, aka hose clamps. These were the Gen 1 proof of concept for the weapon-mounted lights, as we know it nowadays. The biggest question that's always posed seems to be, was it an actual mag light? As far as the torch or the light, we're certain that either Kel lights or stream lights were used on that day, as seen in this photo when troopers posed with Prime Minister Maggie Thatcher right after the operation. The exact model, whether stream light or mag light, matters less, but rather the function of the D cell lights being able to focus enough of the beam to the target is the key to this loadout. Now consider this image from the BBC documentary where they had the actual SAS troopers advise and partake in to ensure the accuracy in equipment and tactics. Closer image of the actual operation does not exist since the press were cordoned off. Look closely. The length of the light goes from right behind the rear sights to rear of the front handguard. Pop this off. Almost like this. The body is a D-cell body. And you could see knurling on the light bezel in the rear cap. The light bezel up here and the rear cap back here. You see this knurling. And it almost, almost looks like that signature of white lettering around the bezel that mag light puts on there. These point to a 2D-cell mag light, which is what we're using to kit our SP5 out. Now, when we look at the development of weapon-mounted lights, there are two major restricting technologies. One would be the power source, and two would be the illumination technology. Now, the development of the D-cell battery may seem trivial for us today, but absolutely was an advancement from where they were. Now, the other part of this comes down to the illuminating technology. While the mag light itself it doesn't necessarily have a bulb that is much stronger than the US military L-shaped light that uses the same type of D-cell battery technology. The incandescent bulb's beam can be focused with a bezel to where it is incredibly tight. By being able to focus that beam into a concentrated light, you get a hotspot. Basically, an operator now can use the light to both illuminate in a low light and smoky condition, but he can also use the light as an aiming device. In fact, you can see in this movie rendition of the Six Day Siege, and how all the lights have been concentrated into beams during the assault. Now, once a light has been added to the MP5, especially if you put into account you're using a dual magazine setup. The system becomes incredibly heavy. However, 
This also drastically lowers recoil. And when you couple this with a three-point sling system and push out using the sling tension method, even with a respirator and the stock collapse, the system becomes a very lethal tool in a CQB environment. You basically don't have to aim by using the sights and you could aim slightly lowered. Now with the sling and the mag light up top, while illumination is clearly inferior to current technology, the system was still easily maneuvered without requiring the use of iron sights to gather hits on a 15 meter target in quick succession. If you actually slow down the footage here and look, you can see that my first shot was too low due to the height over bore. So I corrected and landed multiple successive shots on target in the lethal zones. So while this is a short discussion on a key development in weapon mounted light technology, we can see how by coupling a very efficient firearm with a creative employment of field solutions yielded an incredibly lethal solution uh, for operators in the field. Now, later on, troopers operators would start shifting the over the top mounted mag light to an under barreled position. And you could see evidence of the under barrel mounted flashlight. But later on, as technology started developing itself more in the realm of weapon mounted lights, a different type of device would further push along the development of CQB tactics and the MP5. But that conversation we shall allow Josh to further talk about in his upcoming comprehensive weapon mounted light video. We shall continue to revel at the cool classic SAS solutions that they came out with in the field and the derivations of it to solve a problem that ultimately saved lives. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the range. Seven one six this is Zero Nine Six Four Vic Eight Pack Red Con One Green and Green Top Copy Over. Zero Nine Six this is Seven One Six Roger Over. One Six Zero Nine One One Pack Green Green Over. Seven One Six Roger Over. One Six Zero Nine Two One Vic Two Packs Red Con One.